it's that time again. Last week, Hearthstone announced that the next expansion is going to be Skolomance Academy. But instead of a dungeon overrun by undead, like in World of Warcraft, Hearthstone's version is a really upbeat school with wild experimentation and learning. Right up our alley. Of course, with a new expansion, there are new mechanics and cards to explore. So let's get review number one started. Huh, this should be interesting. In this video, we'll look at what new mechanics Skolomance Academy is bringing to the game and review cards from the announcement that use those mechanics. So we'll cover spell burst, dual class cards, studies, and include transfer student for good measure. The rest of the cards from the announcement and a few more will meet our magnifying glass in our next review. Real quick, before we hop into the reviews, let me note that we do card reviews a bit differently here. Rather than a 5 star rating for cards, we ask the three questions Hearthstone players really want to know. First, would the card fit into one of the current meta decks, tier 1 through tier 3 decks per HS Replay's tier list? So is it meta now? As you can see, there are a ton of different decks in the top three tiers at the moment, but we use these to gauge the card's power level a bit. Second, will the card fit into a meta deck once the expansion comes out? Meaning, from what we know so far, even if it doesn't fit a current meta deck, is it powerful enough to create a new meta archetype? So is it meta later? And third, most importantly to us, does it inspire or enable crazy, experimental, or meme decks? So is it meme deck worthy? Each card will get a yes or no to these questions. There's a link to quick reviews with puns in the description below for those of you without much time. For everyone else, let's get into the main reviews. The first new mechanic for Skolomance Academy is the Spell Burst keyword. Spell Burst is an effect that will trigger an additional effect one time after a spell is played. It looks as though the cards which still haven't triggered their spell burst effect will have this symbol displayed. So let's look at our first card, Goody Two Shields, to try figuring out how this works. Goody Two Shields is a 3 mana 4 2 minion for Paladin that has Divine Shield. She also has Spell Burst, Gain Divine Shield. Since she starts with Divine Shield, there's a decent chance she can survive until the next turn if you drop her on turn 3. If you play any spell after she's lost her Divine Shield, she'll gain Divine Shield back, once. Now, from the first card, we have some questions that haven't been answered yet. For example, what happens if you play a spell before Goody Two Shields loses her first Divine Shield? Does she lose the Spell Burst effect? She can't have double Divine Shields, we know, we've tried. Based on similar scenarios in the past, my guess is that it will try to give her Divine Shield again anyways, burning the Spell Burst, and she won't have a chance to get a second Divine Shield. Let me know in the comments what you think. So looking at Goody Two Shields with our review criteria, is she a good card? She does have nice aggressive stats for her cost, and she's a bit challenging to remove, but she wouldn't fit into Murloc Paladin. However. Pure Paladin would probably be happy to include her, maybe in place of Shotbot or Aldor Peacekeeper as a popular card. So we'll go ahead and say Goody Two Shields would be meta now. As for the upcoming meta, we haven't seen too much from the new set yet, but with these stats and the extra value potential from the Spell Burst effect, I'm pretty confident she'll find a home in the future meta, even if it is just a pure Paladin deck. And with this card's emphasis on Divine Shields, there's no way we can overlook the opportunity to make a massive Blood Knight meme deck. Throw Guardian Og Merchant, this card, and a few more Divine Shield cards into a deck, and let the meme times roll. Shamans are the other class that got to see a Spellburst card in the announcement. Diligent Note Taker is a 2 mana 2-3 two, minion with a Spellburst effect to return the spell to your hand. Want an extra Lava Burst to close out the game? Or would you prefer another Storm's Wrath to buff up your board real quick? Diligent Note Taker will be happy to help. Again, there's a bit of a question with how Spell Burst works in relation to this card that isn't clear quite yet. If we cast the Zero Mana Evolve card, Mutate, on this, will we get a copy back? If it's whenever a spell is cast that it triggers, then we should. 
But if it's after a spell is cast, then we won't get it back because he'll transform before a spell burst triggers. We'll find out eventually, but even if it doesn't let us mutate him and get extra value, the rest of the time, Note Taker will be replenishing our spell supply very effectively. I love the idea of dropping him on turn 2, casting Serpent Shrine Portal on 3, and getting another Serpent Shrine Portal to cast the following turn. So would Diligent Note Taker join any current meta decks? Totem Shaman is doing surprisingly well right now, and is a bit light on 2 mana cards. You probably use the hero power on turn 2 in Totem Shaman, but as a way to generate an extra Lava Burst, Serpent Shrine Portal, or even Totemic Reflection later in the game, I think this would make the cut in some versions. Depending on the interaction with Mutate, this might even merit inclusion in Galakron Shaman, which is just barely clawing its way into Tier 3. Shaman has felt pretty weak since rotation, which is one reason I was surprised to see how well Totem Shaman is doing. A little bit more value generation of a card that you already like enough to run in your deck that can come out fairly early might just be what the class needs to develop a new viable archetype. Either way, I think this will work pretty well in Totem Shaman, so it should be meta later as well. So Eye of the Storm Kael'thas Shaman isn't terribly consistent, but what if we could use Diligent Note Taker to give us an extra copy of one of our zero cost spells to discount the Eye of the Storm? That'd make the meme even stronger. Or, you know, we could get an extra Eye of the Storm on turn 9 if we time the Note Taker correctly with two zero cost spells already in hand. Since there's potential to play four copies of the same spell consistently with this card, and since generation of unexpected value is the bread and butter of meme decks, I'm absolutely certain we'll use this to enable some bizarre meme decks. The first neutral spellburst minion to be revealed was Wretched Tutor, a 4 mana 2-5 with a spellburst to deal 2 damage to all other minions. When first looking at this card, I thought it was more expensive but easier to trigger Arcane Flak Mage, but she will hit your own minions as well. Still, for classes that don't have reliable board clears, or the class that might be happy to have its own minions damaged as well, Wretched Tutor has some intriguing potential. As with the last card, I'm curious about the timing of the trigger of Spellburst with this. For example, can a rogue use Shadow Step to trigger this, bounce it back into hand, and have it ready to play again for 2 mana less next time? I doubt it, but if it does work that way, it would make this a very efficient way for rogues to start controlling the board. Neutral cards are always a bit more challenging to determine if they would fit into a current meta deck, as every meta deck, other than Pure Paladin and No Minion Mage of course, is a potential contender. That being said, this effect is closest to Explosive Trap for Hunters, but wouldn't make the cut in any Hunter lists. Bomb Warrior uses a number of board clears and cheap spells that would pair well with this, but the removal is generally better than this. Enrage Warrior could consider it, but Risky Skipper fills the role quite well, actually just better on her own, and paying 4 mana for this feels too expensive for the reward. I don't think Wretched Tutor would make the cut in any current meta decks. There is potential for a class that hasn't typically had sufficient AoE removal to use this in developing a new archetype, so I don't want to completely give up on this card yet. There may be a few other cards yet to be revealed that will synergize with this quite well, but from what we've seen thus far, I can't say I have high hopes for this in the future meta either. For now, we're going to say this isn't meta later either. But our Frothing Berserker, Rampage, Super Enrage Warrior meme deck will be happy to welcome Wretched Tutor with open arms. If we miraculously stick a Frothing Berserker to the board, following it up with a Wretched Tutor and Inner Rage will probably serve as a board clear and super boost to Frothing Berserker so we can slam our opponent's face with a massive Berserker. Not that we'll use it, but Commanding Shout is pretty interesting with this to keep our minions alive through it too. Anyways, Wretched Tutor is meme deck worthy. There was one more neutral spellburst minion released at the same time as the announcement, and that was Onyx Mage Scribe. He's a 6 mana 4 9 dragon with spellburst to add 2 random spells from your class 
to your hand. This is a really well statted minion for 6 mana. Considering the dragon synergies available at the moment, perhaps he finds his way into a couple decks? The problem with Mage Scribe is that the spells are random, so you can't rely on him to get what you want, and there aren't many decks that are looking for more random value generation. Perhaps Onyx Mage Scribe is the final push to revive Dragon Priest? The class seems to do well with randomly generated cards already, so they might be able to use this guy effectively. This is too slow to fit into current forms of Dragon Hunter, Dragon Druid doesn't need it, and it's not even very helpful to Highlander Dragon Mage. Though if a Dragon deck were to use it, they'd be the best candidate. This isn't good enough to make the Cube Priest or Galakron Priest either, so I don't think Onyx Mage Scribe would make the cut for any current meta decks. However, with 9 health for 6 mana, and the first Priest card we saw for the set, we'll cover that in the next review. I really do think there's a chance Innerfire Priest returns. If it does, this would be a serious consideration for the deck, making this a meta later card. I guess we should be glad that Divine Spirit rotated into the Hall of Fame. But yes, at least in Inner Fire Priest, I think this will see play in a new meta deck. As for memes, our Dragons and Murlocs Reed Paladin deck we played the other day would be happy to toss this in. There's a video from last Thursday if you're interested. Also, a full Dragon Paladin or even a Dragon Rogue finally getting to use Candle Breath will toss it in. So yes, there's quite a bit of meme deck potential for this card. Sadly, the spells we get from this are from our class, so Quest Rogue won't be able to use Onyx Mage Scribe effectively, but there will be other ways. Next up, we'll get to look at another new mechanic from this set, dual class cards. As an example, let's look at Wand Thief real quick. We'll cover her in depth in a moment, but you can see the border of her card is Mage Blue and Rogue Grey, so she's playable by both mages and rogues. Some of you may remember dual class arenas from around Halloween in the past, but this takes that a step further and makes a card playable by just two classes. It's really similar to the tri-class cards from Mean Streets of Gadgetzan, but limited to two classes the border shows. There will be 40 dual class cards in the set, but Blizzard isn't just combining classes randomly. Here's a diagram showing which classes can pair with each other. So Mage's dual class cards will be with Rogue and Shaman, as we'll see in a moment. Based on the number they mentioned, and the fact that there are 10 classes, I'm betting we'll see 4 of each combination of classes shown here. This should spice things up quite a bit. So let's look at Wand Thief more in depth for a moment. She's a 1 mana 1 2 mage and rogue card with the rogue keyword combo to discover a mage spell. So rogues can get mage secrets more consistently without having to rely on Shadow Jeweler Hanar now. The combo requirement means this probably won't be coming down on turn 1 very often, but it's cheap enough that it's easy to pull off the combo when you're ready. Highlander Mage doesn't use any 1-drops, but they do use Arcane Breath to generate some extra value. Perhaps with the nerf to Dragoncaster, a form of Highlander Mage less reliant on Dragon Synergies would want to use this? Galakron Secret and Stealth Rogue could consider running this to prep for a massive Edwin turn, though it's a tough choice as to whether you'd play it over Pharaoh Cat. I think some versions would include it, so we'll say that Wand Thief would be meta now. And once the expansion comes out and we can play around with all the dual class cards, this will definitely find a home in a few meta decks. As for memes, Quest Rogue couldn't ask for a better enabler for the archetype. Also, our infinite secret trees, Togwaggle's scheme deck will welcome this thief with open arms. That's just a little of the meme potential on the rogue side. Mage will surely have a few as well. So yes, Wand Thief is definitely a meme deck enabler. The other dual class card from reveal day mages got is Devolving Missiles. This is a 1 mana spell for mages and shamans to shoot 3 missiles at random enemy minions, transforming them into ones that cost 1 less. This is a broken good combination of arcane missiles and devolve. For 1 mana, you get to drop the quality of your opponent's board down by 3 mana. 
while most likely disrupting any tribal synergies and death rattle effects your opponent was counting on. Totem and Galakron Shaman in their current forms probably wouldn't run this, and since it doesn't remove any minions, it's not as exciting as a removal or stall tool as Arcane Breath and Ray of Frost for Highlander Mage, but Big Spell Mage and No Minion Mage could probably slot it in pretty well in place of one of their popular cards. So we'll say it would be meta now. As for the future, perhaps this will give Cyclone Mage what it needs to resurge into the meta? If Buff Priest or Res Priest become pretty popular, I can see this getting slotted into quite a few decks as a tech card, but I think it may just find a home in a few meta decks regardless. This is a bit challenging to slot into meme decks as the devolve effect will be somewhat inconsistent. However, it's a one mana spell, and in combination with Diligent Note Taker we looked at earlier, this provides some crazy good fuel for a Fist of Radin Horde Pillager deck. I guess we'll have to see if any new 1 mana legendaries get released, or if Reliquary of Souls will still be the guaranteed outcome for Fist of Radin and 1 cost spells. For now, this is meme deck worthy. Shamans also got to see another of their dual class cards during the reveal, Lightning Bloom. Lightning Bloom is a zero cost spell for shamans and druids that allows them to gain two mana crystals this turn only, but you overload for two. If you remember Innervate from before it was nerfed, this is that card with overload. If you thought the exotic mount seller turn for spell druids was bad now, just wait. The overload isn't too heavy of a drawback, and shamans will probably be able to figure out how to use the overload portion of this advantageously as well. So both classes are definitely looking forward to this coming out. In the current meta, Spell and Dragon Druid would definitely use this. Totem Shaman only has one card that cares about being overloaded at the moment, but they would also find a way to slot this in. And in the upcoming meta, I see a more overload oriented Shaman deck rising into the meta and the current Druid decks using this but there may be even more archetypes this ends up enabling. So yeah, prepare to see lots of lightning blooms. And memes? Druid already has access to mana cheating, but this will open the door for a number of more expensive combinations that Shaman has never been able to pull off reliably. Yes, this is a powerful meme deck enabler, and we'll be looking for all kinds of ways to exploit it. And the last dual class card from the announcement is Shando Wildclaw. She's a 3 mana 3-3 three, three hunter and druid legendary minion with a choose one effect to either give beasts in your deck plus one plus one or transform into a copy of a friendly beast. Without quite a few more beasts being printed for druid or hunter, I'm fairly sure we'll almost only see her transform into a copy of a friendly beast, but that's a crazy powerful effect. I could see Highlander Hunter including this just to have the option of dropping it on Dino Tamer Brand's King Crush on turn 10. There aren't too many other beasts in the deck, but the value of getting another Zixor or even cycling through the rush minions in the deck with Diving Griffin makes me think it would make the cut. Quest Hunter and maybe even Face Hunter would have reasons to consider this as well. Big Druid would love an extra copy of Winged Guardian too. In the future, this may be sufficient to earn Marsh Hydra a slot in Big Druid alongside Winged Guardian, and a deck or two using more beasts in Hunter may develop as well. Buffed Stone Tusk Boar Hunter just became a lot more consistent, and it may even cause Shandu Wildclaw to use her first effect? Probably not, but we'll be seeing her in the new meta for sure. As for memes, one more way to copy King Crush is always welcome. Our 9 lives Zixor deck will also be happy to have another way to generate extra copies or buff our Zixor primes hanging out in our deck. Yes, this has a home in Hunter meme decks, and we may find a way or two to use it in Druid as well. Now for the final new card type we'll be seeing in the expansion, Studies. Studies are cards that will discover a card of a certain type and reduce the cost of the next one of that type. For example, the announcement revealed the first studies card, Nature Studies. Nature Studies is a one mana druid spell to discover a spell, 
reducing the cost of the next spell you cast by one mana. If a different studies card discovers a demon, the next demon will cost less mana. But for this card, this is just a powerful way for druids to generate an additional resource without any mana drawback. Normally, the logical recommendation would be to just run all the spells you want in the deck already. But with Exotic Mount Cellar in the meta, the appeal of this card is a lot higher. It's also a way to generate a third or fourth copy of a spell you really like. And there's the benefit of being able to play this a turn early to discount a spell the following turn. For example, playing this on turn two will allow you to play Overgrowth on turn three without the coin or Innervate. Spell and Dragon Druid probably would find a slot for this in their current builds just because it's so good at providing one more beast from Exotic Mount Cellar and could generate an additional buff for their wide boards. The future meta decks will also find a slot for this as well. I would expect that there's a way to use this to make some crazy meme deck work, but something like banking the spell discount to germinate a Siamat or something like that is already possible with Innervate, and none of the current druid spells are so broken that generating a third or fourth copy is a great build around idea. It would also be difficult to generate an extra copy reliably since it's only three cards being discovered. This is a great card, but it doesn't really enable any new crazy or experimental decks. Sadly, it's not meme deck worthy. And our last card for today is a card most of you have already seen and may have experimented with already. Transfer Student is a two mana 2-2 two -two minion with different effects on each game board. For example, on the Stormwind board, he gains Divine Shield but on the Descent of Dragons board, he discovers a dragon. Here's a list of his effects on each board in Standard. While you've probably seen Transfer Student in a few decks on the ladder recently, it's definitely more a case of him being an exciting new card to experiment with than he earns a slot in any meta decks. Once the excitement dies down, we can be fairly certain that he will not be an inclusion in any meta decks. Even Highlander ones, because his effects are far too inconsistent and several are fairly weak for a 2 mana 2-2. Two -two. So other than the fun experimentation going on at the moment, Transfer Student is not a meta now card. And certainly, once the new meta settles, he shouldn't make the cut for any meta decks then either. However, Transfer Student is really fun to experiment with and has a super unique effect that we can't fully plan around. So we built a few meme decks trying to capitalize on the different options in Standard and already played it on stream this weekend. We may be seeing a highlight video in the near future with a game or two from that experimentation. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a bit more experimentation with him in the future as well. So Transfer Student gains permanent status as a meme deck worthy card. Enjoy the memes. And now for the quick reviews. Goody Two Shields made sure she's good to go into current and future meta decks, and Blood Knight is looking forward to memeing with her. Diligent Note Taker was so diligent in preparing to join Hearthstone that current and future meta decks will use him, and he's keeping his eye on some stormy meme possibilities. Wretched Tutor is too wretched for current meta decks, needs some seriously supportive subjects to have a chance in the new meta but Frothing Berserker is giving a commanding shout for her to join him in enraged memes. Onyx Mage Scribe wouldn't join Highlander Dragon Mage or any other current meta deck, but he may be able to write himself into the future meta with Priest's help. And quite a few memes, including our Dragons and Murlocs read deck, would love a literate dragon to join them. Wand Thief could probably steal a slot from another card in a current meta deck, she'll definitely perform some combos in the new meta, and more meme decks than just Quest Rogue are eager to hire her services. Devolving Missiles will launch its way into a couple current and future meta decks, and as long as no other one-cost legendaries are announced, Diligent Note Taker will keep track of how many Reliquaries of Souls the Fist of Radin can summon in a game while devolving opponents. Lightning Bloom is a guaranteed inclusion in current and meta decks and is certain to provide some electrifying potential to a number of meme decks. 
Shando Wildclaw will claw her way into the current and future metas, and she certainly shan, I mean can, do some wild things in meme decks. Nature Studies would be a natural fit in the current meta, will be a must take in the future meta, but doesn't seem to be a required course for any meme decks. While Transfer Student is seeing experimentation on the latter in the current meta, he's not reliable enough to be a current or future meta card. However, we will be more than happy to transfer him from board to board in our meme decks. And that's a wrap. We'll be looking at the rest of the cards from Skolomance Academy in future reviews, so drop a like if you enjoyed, and smash that subscribe button so you'll know when the next video comes out. You're awesome. Thank you for watching, and have an awesome day. To the old school romance, the magic school, magic of, school yours. of yours, your legacy of love.